how do you see it, right? Great April. Uh, here we are in May. W what do you think happens? I, I do think we're going to see a stall here and a bit of a sputter. Uh, I think your comments and, and the rest of the group's comments about the consumer are well taken. And, you know, my, my view is that we're not, even if we do see a reemergence re of cases in some of these reopened economies, I think there's very little appetite to go back to a, um, a shelter at home or, you know, severe social distancing guidelines once you've been released from those. But I do think it will be a behavioral response from the consumer. And so I think that's going to be the most challenging thing over the course of the next few quarters is modeling in a behavioral response that we really have no certainty on. So I agree with Steph. You know, you can't look at 2020, particularly in the consumer sectors. The other thing that I would note is that, you know, this Fed insulation of, of hitting, you know, the, the floor with a pillow instead of a, a block of concrete, I think is worth noting. Because if we look over the course of the next several quarters, you know, you're going to be rewarded for some of the risk that you shouldn't be rewarded for. We're staying away from that trade, but there are going to be pockets of the economy that should be doing there, pockets of the stock market and the bond market that should be doing worse than they are, but are going to be supported by that Fed intervention. And then finally, to Jim's point on inter enterprise spend, I don't think we're going to see the declines in enterprise spend a until a couple quarters from now, because the projects that are in process right now are going to be difficult to halt. It's really how do we look in two to three quarters, and do companies want to keep more of that cash on their balance sheet rather than put new projects forth in the IT space? I think actually that's when we're going to start to see that decline in enterprise spend. All right, let's bring in Lizanne Saunders. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Charles Schwab, she's the chief investment officer there. Lizanne, it's nice to have you back. Uh, I hope My you've pleasure. been hope you've been well. Yes, thank so you. You, you've heard the commentary. Um, yeah. Give us your own, you know, as we enter a new month after what's been um, a historic month. Yeah, well, you know, you had you had a, a number of different comments on on valuation. And I, I think that's maybe the more interesting one these days. And it brings in a lot of facets. First of all, the just the, the moving target that is the the E and what is still a pretty yawning gap between bottom-up estimates, and admittedly, analysts are flying blind here, given the large percentage of companies that have simply withdrawn guidance. But it comes down about a dollar a day just in earnings season. So if you use the refinitive consensus in January, we were close to 180 for 2020 calendar year dollar amount of S&P earnings. Now we're down to 130. The problem is that, again, they're flying blind. The top-down estimates by economists, strategists, are as low as $90. So if you start to do the math of current multiple on 2020 earnings, it's a function is 130 accurate, you're at 22, still not cheap, or is 90 accurate, you're at 31 or 32, clearly not cheap. So when people say the market's rally is a function of looking through the valley, 2021 is a 25% growth rate, but here's where level matters more than percentage change. 25% up from what? 90 is very different than 130. And so I think when you look at what's happened with the rally where sentiment had gone from unbelievably despairing to now arguably a bit stretched, you're now technically overbought and you don't have that sort of anchor of the ability to look at valuation, I, I think that's why we're seeing what we're seeing, not to mention some of the news, not just you, you were talking about what, uh, what Cuomo said with regard to the schools, but I also saw a headline flash that de Blasio made a comment on a radio show about clearly, you know, New York isn't going to reopen for several months. So I think that may have been a factor as well. Yeah, I mean, I just wonder whether there is a, a heightened level and overly so level of optimism about, you know, this reopen. We didn't even discuss... The, the possible prospects of whatever sort of retaliation against China, if there right. is any, that the administration is considering. Kudlow really didn't go there uh, all that much um, this morning. But you have to you have to think, you know, if the president's on the defensive about his handling of the virus and we're getting closer and closer towards the election, the noise is going to get louder and louder, um, looking to deflect blame on, on others or perhaps have some sort of re retaliatory impact on China. We just don't know. And, and I don't know to what degree, you know, the market is, is thinking about that. So do, do you think we're going to go? You don't think we're going to go back to the lows, do you? I have no idea. Um, but maybe more important than whether I know or not, um, I'll, I'll never know, uh, is that you don't necessarily need to know that to be a successful long-term investor. I think there's too much of a focus on the perceived necessity of timing tops and bottoms. If it's a retest, do we break through those lows? As long as, long as you're not making all or nothing get-in, get-out decisions, and in particular this environment, maybe have rebalancing be, be driven more by volatility in asset classes and market moves as opposed to making 
it a function of sort of calendar periodicity, which is often when rebalancing kicks in. People might do it on a quarterly basis or an annual basis. We've been telling investors if you, if you can, if you can tolerate the, maybe the additional turnover, obviously there are tax implications, let your portfolio tell you when it's time to do something by virtue of the speed with which we are getting these unbelievable moves, you know, a near record-breaking decline in March and then a record-breaking increase in April. If you have that very disciplined approach around rebalancing, it would have had you adding a little bit at the lows, you know, trimming now. And you don't have to have that pinpoint uh, decision uh, to be right in order to be successful long term. And I think that's sometimes what gets missed in discussions about tops and bottoms, D bottom, A bottom, 